This is question 1, 2011 Higher, paper 2. Part A of the questions, the question asks us to state the coordinates of point B. All this information tells us we're sitting with a, a square-based pyramid and we've to find the coordinates of B, crucial piece of information, OA is 4 units. So the length of this side of the square is 4 units. The other, or one of the other sides, must also be 4 units. So there is this information translated to the diagram. So to get the coordinates of B, start at the origin, let's move along the x-axis, four units to the point A, and then at right angles, parallel to the y-axis, of course that doesn't look like a right angle, but suppose we, we lifted ourselves up above D and looked straight down at this uh, diagram, we would see the x and, and y-axis with a square sitting on it. That would be the point A, that would be the point C, this would be the point B. D would appear right in the middle of that square. There's the origin. And what we've just described is that side of the square being four units, this side of the square, right angle there, at four units. So that's it seen from the side, looking down on this uh, picture, that's it seen from above. So the coordinates of B, 4 units along the X, that's the X coordinate of the point B, followed by 4 units along this other side, that's the Y coordinate of the point B, followed by a height. Now the height is 0 since the base of this square base pyramid is sitting on the X, Y plane, the flat surface that has the x and y axis on it. So there is no, uh, or there is a, a, a obviously a, a z coordinate, but its value is zero, since we haven't, we don't need to go up or down parallel to the z axis to get to the point b. So let's go over that from the origin, four units to a, four units along to B parallel to the Y axis, no units up or down parallel to the Z axis. Coordinates of B, 4, 4, 0. So part B of the question express, I suppose, the journey from D to B and the journey from D to M in component form. So let's start with travel from D to B. And let's uh, look at that journey. Here it is, from D down to B. There's the arrow that we've used to travel. So the journey from D to B component form, remember we put them in a column, X component. Travelling from D to B, what have we done in a direction parallel to the, what, to the X axis? Well, we've gone from 2 to 4. So really from 2 to 4 along the x-axis would be a journey of 2 units parallel to the x-axis. Let's look at the y-coordinate. y-coordinate here is 2 and we've ended up at 4. So we've travelled 2 to 4 units along the y-axis. Again, that's a journey of 2 units parallel to the y-axis. Heights now, the third coordinate, the Z coordinate is 6 when we start and it's reached 0 when we finish. That's a decrease. We've gone down parallel to the Z axis, 6 units. So the Z component is minus 6. The journey from D to M We'll do that in a similar manner. Let's show it in the diagram, D to M. X coordinate, first of all, 2 when we start. Oh, we don't know what the coordinates of the point M are. M is the midpoint 
of OA. So we're travelling halfway from O to A. It was four units along here, so from O to M will just be half of that, two units. So the x-coordinate of M must be two, and we've reached M, so there's no journey parallel to the y-axis, and there's no height journey up or down parallel to the z-axis. So coordinates of point M are two, zero, zero. So travelling from D to M, x-coordinate, we start out with two, we finish with two. We haven't moved along the x-axis in that journey. So zero units. The y-coordinate, we start with two, we end with zero. Start with two, end with zero. That's a decrease of two units parallel to the y-axis, minus two for the y-component of this journey from D to M. The height, starting at six, finishing at zero. 6 to 0. That was the same as what we did travelling from D to B. So it's a decrease of 6 units minus 6 for the Z component. So here's the final part of this question. Part C asks us to find the size of angle B, D, M. Let me indicate that on the diagram. So B, D, M. Vertex is up at D. Let's call that angle that we're after theta. Now, if we're using vectors to find an angle like this, we should make sure that the arms have arrows pointing out from the vertex. Let's call that vector P, and let's call this vector Q. Um, these two vectors are what's going to be used, well, the six component numbers of these, three for this one and three for this one, we're going to use to find the cosine of this angle theta. And the result we use, which is on your formula sheet, and you should be familiar with this, cos theta is equal to the dot product of P and Q divided by the magnitude of P times the magnitude of Q, the product of the two magnitudes. Now, these are val these are the components of these were what we found earlier. Uh, the vector P is the journey from D to B, and the components we had worked out were two, two minus six. The components of vector Q, that was the journey from D to M, we had worked out before were 0, minus 2, minus 6. So, a little calculation. First of all, to get P dot Q, the dot product of these two vectors, multiply the X components, multiply the Y components, multiply the Z components, add the results, that's your dot product. So 2 times 0 plus 2 times minus 2 plus negative 6 times negative 6. 0 minus 4 plus 36. That's 32. The magnitude of P, square, 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 add the results and take the square root. Three components, square each of them, 2 squared, plus 2 squared, plus negative 6 squared, take the square root of the result. 4 plus 4 plus 36, that's 44 square rooted. The magnitude of Q, Similarly, x component squared plus y component squared plus z component squared. 0 plus 4 plus 36, 40 square rooted. So the calculation of cos theta 
involves a fraction, the top number of the fraction dot product, 32, the bottom number in the fraction, the denominator, the product of these two magnitudes. So root 44 times root 40. And to do this calculation, uh, we need a calculator. So here's my calculator. First of all, 32 for the top of the fraction, 32, divided by... Now, to do this calculation... Oh, look, there's a square root missing. To do this calculation... We need brackets, because it's 32 divided by the whole of this number. So brackets are essential. So that bracket goes in 44 square rooted. In this calculator, I put the number in, then square root. and yours, it's probably square root 44 times 40 square rooted. And then close your brackets. That's the new, the denominator of the fraction. Root 44 times root 40 is 41.95, etc. So that's the bottom. When I press equals, I'll get the final result. And there it is. So 0 0.762. And that, fraction, that decimal continues indefinitely. So finally, to get the actual angle, this is the cosine of the angle that we're after. Uh, so we really have to ask the calculator, what is the angle whose cosine is 0 0.762, etc.? That's not the cosine button, that's the cos to the minus 1 or inverse cosine button. So if I press that, 40.29. Now you have to know what mode your calculator is in. And in this case, I'm working in degrees, not radians. Radians would be perfectly okay for this, so long as we state what we're, we're doing at the end. So in degrees, 40.29 and so on. So the angle theta is equal to 40.3 degrees. Now if I'm vandalizing this number by chopping it off there and rounding it to the nearest tenth of a degree, I have to state quite clearly what I'm doing. So I would say that's to one decimal uh, place. So our answer, 40.3 degrees for this angle.